I'm Sanjay Bhangar. I'm, uh, I work out of Bombay. I work at an organization called CAMP that uh, three of us co-founded about five years ago. We're kind of an art space. Um, the, the, the reason I'm showing you our website is for some reason, this is, we had interns uh, working with us for, this was about like four or five years ago and we weren't sure uh, what work to give them. Uh, so um, they actually sat and uh, took Google Maps uh, like screenshots and, and, and put it together in Photoshop and then we printed this kind of really large map of, of Bandra where we work and that also ends up being the, the background to our website. Um, uh, this doesn't really have anything to do with the presentation. I'm going to show uh, three kind of unconnected projects. The, the, the only kind of thing connecting them is that I've been involved with them one way or the other. Uh, two of them, um, I haven't done the majority of the work on, so they're really complex questions I'm probably not going to be able to answer and going to refer you to uh, the, de the developers' uh, Twitter IDs. Uh, but I have, um, you know, I've, I've worked quite a lot on these projects in one way or the other. Um, so let me start with the first one. Um, it's, it's primarily a video project. It's a video archive project we've been working on um, with Jan Gerber and Sebastian Dutkert from Germany who've done most of the kind of heavy lifting. And uh, so this is a website that they run and formed the inspiration for a project we started in India called Padma. Um, their website is called ZeroXDB, uh, which is kind of um, a visualization of their downloaded movies, right? So it's kind of like they've downloaded like tens of thousands of movies over the years and um, kind of wanted to have some good way to kind of filter, sort, uh, have people make lists, share those lists, etc. Uh, so one of the things that they really wanted to do is display the movies on the map, on a, on a map. Um, so there's several other components to the website as well, but I kind of focus focus on the maps. Um, so this is a website that they started about six years ago, and then we started Padma, which looks very similar in terms of interface, but is kind of working with documentary filmmakers mostly from India. And the big difference is on 0xdb, all their data is gathered by crawling the internet, right? They parse IMDb for place names uh, and for other things. Uh, except on Padma, we put in all the data ourselves. Um, and on Padma, it's kind of documentary films that we are free to show the video material as well. So you can see the video material as well. On 0xdb, you can see all the metadata, but not the actual video material because that's uh, a copyright issue. Um, so the... Um, so what it went back to in the past three years is realizing that dealing with large data sets in general is a kind of interesting problem online. And when you're combining uh, you know, location data, other sorts of metadata, etc., that you really want some sort of library or framework to deal with this. So um, it's been spent uh, building uh, this library, which uh, we call OXJS, which is a JavaScript frame framework to build web applications that's kind of highly ambitious. Um, if you see any of these websites, uh, they're all one page. Uh, you load one page which basically has, you know, open body, closed body, that's it, and one uh, script tag that then loads all the JavaScript, uh, handles all the URL changes, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's a bit ambitious. I think it's something that, um, that will probably, you know, will start performing really well probably in the next few years, but we thought it might be an interesting thing to do. So just to show you kind of how the maps uh, work on this front end is it, the movies have all been passed for location names and have been passed at the clip level. So the idea is that get subtitle files for the movies, uh, run your location on them right now in a kind of naive way of just uh, having a list of existing location names that you search for in subtitles and then geolocate those clips of the movies, right? So just, um, you know, really quickly, let's, uh, um, so if we click on South Asia or maybe zoom in, so I'll get, I'll get to this kind of like map interface that you see that looks kind of weird because it's Google, but it's not really, um, it doesn't really look like the Google Maps interface. So OXJS has a kind of wrapper over the Google Maps interface, right? And there's, there's an open bug report to swap out Google for open street maps and, uh, and open layers or leaflet or something. But development on this was started about three or four years ago. With, so, well, the choice was made to use Google, but it's a complete 
mapping library written over it. So I'll show you some of the other things that have been done with the mapping library that have nothing to do with maps almost. Um, so this just to demo you how it works. The idea is that you can click on a location. Oh wait, this doesn't actually have clips. So if I click on Mumbai, it trolls through the archive, uh, shows you all the clips uh, that are tagged with that location, and then uh, you can actually watch uh, watch those tiny like five second clip that's been tagged with the word Mumbai right there. If our internet connection is decent enough, the video is going to play. But otherwise, you can kind of, and then I can double click to see kind of the details of this video, etc. Um, so this was kind of from automatic metadata, and then uh, on Padma we've got this kind of like labor of love, kind of like people going in and and uh, marking out clips of videos. So you can see there's a really heavy kind of density around Bombay because that's that's where a lot of our video material is. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of like zoom in. Um, I'm also going to try and keep a track of time because I have to show three different things. Uh, but you get the idea that there's a lot of little locations in there. Um, and this, again, has been done in a kind of like manual data, like people put the names as an interface to kind of do a geo lookup and then kind of mark out where that, where that location actually is. Uh, for some reason, the server is sometimes standing out. But you click on a location, you get the videos, you can cross. So I can also turn on stuff like these filters, right? So I want to see only the videos that have the topic um, uh, leaks, for instance, we probably won't, but if we say cityscape. Um, so you see all these filters kind of work together, right? So you can filter by different keywords, you can filter by locations on the map, you can filter by people, etc. So this is possible with the OXJS library, which let me kind of go back to the front page of. Um, so if, um, you get, it's oxjs.org right now. I've just got it. So what's on the website is basically just a checkout of the code base because it's entirely client side. There's nothing happening on the server, so you could run you could run this entire website either either on on the client or the server. Um, just to show you some of the map examples really quickly, the document. So there's an ox.map. There's a few different ox modules as a UI framework. Uh, which has stuff like those infinite scrolling lists, the buttons, the menus, autocompletes, uh, stuff that you would need for a UI framework. Um, it's got um, and it's got a geo and an image framework, right? It's got this is this is something again. Um, I don't have enough time to get get into the details. Let me kind of just show you some demos of uh, of stuff that's been created uh, with it, right? So. This is also a kind of nice, uh, nice interface to browse the code. You kind of see the code there. You see some, uh, see some comments and documentation. So again, you guys can go over this stuff. It's kind of well annotated, and then you can see this live, right? So here, what this is doing is it's taking a list of cities from geonames.org, uh, parsing, uh, parsing the JSON structure, and uh, rendering it on a on a map with a kind of list filter. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. And the actual code required to do this after using the library is actually quite minimal because you know there's there's a thing that generates your list for you, there's a thing that parses the JSON for you, um, and then throws it up on a map, and you can double click to zoom and, and get get data about the, the area. Just some fun things. Uh, one of my uh, this is pretty cool. Um, the idea of we expanded Manhattan. Uh, just people talking about problems with uh, with addresses and Manhattan is probably the one place where it works really well. You have avenues, you have streets, they cross each other, you can always find a place. Uh, what if we extended that to the whole world? How would it work? What would it look like? Um, there's some code, there's some annotation of how that's done and you can view it live. Um, so this is, and, and you know, you can scroll over and you see the exact address if we stretched out Manhattan across the whole world. Um, there's, there's an IPv4 map of the internet, which again uses the same mapping library, but then you know, kind of throws in a fake projection system and stuff like that, but to map uh, to map IP addresses basically. So um, so you know, it's it's starting from. 
whatever, 1.1.1.1 if that exists, and then going all the way up to um, 254 or whatever, uh, it'll show up. It'll show, it shows you kind of maps of the countries where those IP address blocks are assigned to. And I mean, this is just a fun thing. It was more a demo uh, than anything actually practically useful. But, um, but you know, you can search, so we can search for hasgeek.com, for instance. And it's gonna, it's gonna show us kind of where in the map of world IP addresses it sits. Is it sitting next to, so, you know, it's just, it's, um, it's taking a little time to work. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll come back to this. Uh, just a quick other example, just the fact that the same library has been used in other places. You'll see it look kind of similar, but this is a project with the UN, in, uh, mostly in Iran, kind of dealing with kind of UN projects and mapping out the details of the different projects. Uh, and again, similar, it allows you to filter by multiple things, including on a map. Uh, and then you can kind of get, get some desalination project in Egypt. You can double click on it and get details. Everything's kind of slow. Um, right, so that's just a quick demo. Again, if you guys are interested in the library a bit more, it's oxjs.org. And that has uh, links to download all the code, to get on the mailing list, uh, to our chat room, etc. Um, okay, second thing I'm going to demo. So I'm, I'm, jumping, I'm jumping from one thing to another. I'm going to see if there's a thread that connects all these three things, but maybe there isn't. Um, so this, this is the company that I'm working for, uh, for part-time now. Uh, it's called Topomancy. Uh, they've also paid for my flight ticket here. Uh, um, so we do a couple of things. The project that, I'm, that we're working on over the next year is something attempting to build a, a gazetteer, like a place name, an open place name gazetteer that collates kind of open street maps, geo names, data, etc. That's something we're just kind of starting on. Uh, this is a tool, uh, one of the people we work with, Tim Waters, um, built a few years ago and now we do kind of custom installs and stuff for people. Um, I'll just show you how it works. The, the idea is that uh, if you have raster maps, like if you've got an old historical map or a printout of a map and uh, you want to geolocate it, right? You want, it, you want to be able to overlay it on existing maps, you want to kind of be able to play around with it in, a, in an actual geo ecosystem. So you've got this image of a map, right, that you've scanned, uh, that you found online, etc., and you want to uh, give it real lat long coordinates so that you can overlay it on actual maps and deal with other location data. So this is a really simple tool. You come to mapwalker.net. Uh, it gives you an overview of all maps. You can upload your own map, which is just a JPEG file. Uh, so last night I found uh, this historical map of Bangalore at uh, Lawrence's house who I'm staying with and uh, we scanned it in and I uploaded it, right? So um, I'm going to need someone's help who knows Bangalore a little bit. So this map is I think somewhere in the 1900s and this is the current open street maps. So the idea is you find the same point on your historical map or whatever uh, JPEG map you have and the same point on <laughs> an actual map, right? In this case, it's, it's open street maps. Um, hopefully, we'll have a Bing layer added soon. It's using currently a really old version of open layers, and there's all sorts of problems, but hopefully that'll be rectified soon. Um, but the idea being, so I've got, I'm gonna probably do this really badly, but I've got like Yelahankai here. I'm gonna drop a point here. Wait, I need to click the drawing tool. Right, let's zoom out a little bit. Uh, I think this is Yelahanka. So I drop a point here. Come on, drop. And then I drop the corresponding point here. And nothing happens. Interesting. And the problem, maybe I opened this tab like three or four hours ago because I was worried about internet and I might be logged out or something. I'm just going to... I mean, so the basic idea is really simple though, and it really takes, it's taken people like about 15 minutes of training to get started, like architecture students and things we work with, is, uh, can someone just look at this map and be able to tell corresponding points? <laughs> Okay, um, so I'm gonna have to wait for it to zoom in and stuff like that. But the idea being, okay, 
point tool, double click, double click. Really doesn't work today, huh? Okay, so you're gonna have to imagine this works because it does work really well and I'm gonna show you what it outputs. Um, the idea being, you double click a point there, you double click a point there, you get a little marker, you say add control point, you do this for three or four points, um, and then you say warp image. Uh, you say warp image and then it basically, you know, does all the, does all the heavy math, taking projections into account, etc and gives you a map that's been warped on the actual map. What I, what I am going to do is show you an actual result. So here you can see a map of Bombay that someone warped. Um, and then this literally, so, um, so once you're done warping, it exports it into a whole bunch of formats. It will give you a WMS feed, uh, which is really easy to overlay in any mapping client that you're using. Uh, it gives you a geo tip if you just want to kind of download the whole thing, or you can use uh, a tiles URL um, to plug it in. Um, and then this, literally once that was done, building this kind of overlay. This is something that we're going to get into the workshop tomorrow a little bit, using this really nice mapping library called Leaflet. Um, and that UV is going to show a little bit, but using it literally, it took me about 10 minutes to kind of have this really nice overlay. Uh, you know, I can turn. Oh, look at the opacity slider. Oh, God. Um, for some reason, jQuery.com was not loading, so my, my jQuery wasn't coming in. But, uh, you know, you, you just have. This was just, it was a complete hack, this thing, but. It totally trivial to then have this map, have an opacity slider, uh, mash it up with four other maps. Uh, you know, these, these things become kind of not only possible, but quite trivial to do, that if you have maps of like 1850, 1900, 1950, to just have a you know, toolbox saying, show me a map of this year, turn on the opacity, see what it looks like today, etc. Um, it can be really nice, and uh, this tool makes it really simple to do. Um, and this was developed by Tim Waters. Uh, the code is on GitHub um, at uh, timwaters slash mapwalker. Um, and you can go to mapwalker.net uh, and uh, see any details. This is built on Ruby on Rails and does require, it, it uses GeoServer and stuff on the back end. If uh, uh, people are not familiar with that, it's just a kind of pain to set up. But uh, so, for for open for free maps that you just want to upload, please use mapwalker.net. Uh, and if anyone's interested in uh, runs a library or something is interested in a custom install, you can get in touch with us. Um, okay, third project. Um, this this is something we've been working on in Bombay and something that uh, you can ask me complex questions about because I have been working on the code mostly. Um, is to do bus routing in Bombay. Um, so we, someone we work with, um, uh, had access to the BSD, which is the bus company in Bombay, to get their uh, raw data. Uh, and um, it's, uh, so the idea was that, oh, we're going to take that raw data, oh, yeah, they've given us spreadsheets. Uh, I mean, it's Excel spreadsheets, right? How bad can it be? It's rows and columns of data. Uh, we're going to kind of just process it a bit, plug out GTFS and build all these cool tools. Uh, unfortunately, it took us about like three to six months just to kind of get their Excel tables into a relatively clean, all sorts of problems, I don't want to get into it. Um, they had names of their stops that referenced another stop table, but the names weren't the same, so we had to do fuzzy string matching to kind of connect the stops in this table to that table. Um, I don't know if anyone's dealt with government data before, it would be interesting to kind of talk. It really, at the end of the day, it felt like it would have been easier if we just collected the data ourselves. Um, and then, uh, just coming to, uh, uh, so we were outputting GTFS, which is the uh, general transit speed feed specification, uh, which used to be the Google transit uh, feed specification, uh, which it, it's a great format, but again, is a bit Western centric in that it expects buses to have fixed timings, which is a really weird concept here. Um, so, um, these are the kinds of issues we kind of really faced because even the BST and their data, they had these vague notions of timings, you know, and 
they would be missing for half the places and we'd be like, okay, sir, can we assume this? And, you know, they were really not sure and they're like, you know, at the end of the day, we don't know what, you know, it's just they've got a vague idea that, okay, we'll release about 10 buses between 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. Uh, but they don't, they don't have fixed timings and GDFS wants you to give timings. It wants you to give a fixed time for every trip. Uh, so this is something we really had a problem with. I really wanted to kind of hack it up and just do something that's because it's not accurate anyways. Um, this one guy we were working with spent a lot of time trying to make sense of the BSD data, which, uh, you know, so, you know, we, we had to output this while knowing it's a lie, basically, but we had to do that to get to get all these other tools to work. Um, so what we do have now is uh, a kind of simple SMS app that we've developed, uh, where you can send it kind of place name to place name, and it will give you bus routes. Uh, it does only kind of direct bus routes now because we didn't get into kind of writing uh, an indirect routing algorithm. That's actually really complicated. Uh, we have, so we plugged in our GTFS feed into Open Trip Planner. Open Trip Planner is kind of free software that again reads GTFS and gives you this kind of great routing interface for free. Um, uh, so just to kind of quickly demo it, I can click, I can click a point in the city. So I right click, I say start trip here and it's marked it in Panvir. What's going on? Is it like a, is it my like screen resolution? I right clicked here and it marked it. Wait, let's try that again. No, so let's try it here. Okay. I don't know whether it's like screen resolution, Ubuntu, some weird like, obviously demos never work in presentations, but this is a bit ridiculous. Um, okay, great. So I say start here. I mean, obviously you can zoom the map and stuff like that, but I'm just showing a quick demo. Uh, do a plan your trip. It uh, you know gives you with changeovers. Uh, it gives you uh, you know alternate routes, different changeovers. It really confidently tells you 3:12 p.m. because we had to give our data that way. Of course, that's a complete lie. Um, but um, so the problem we've had with uh, I mean it's been. It's been something that's a bit, and I'm interested, it would also be interesting to have UV kind of share his experiences. I don't know if we're gonna have time for that running bus route study and where they didn't work with the government agency and I think almost landed up doing a better job because of that, uh, because they just kind of ad hoc collected data and did something a lot simpler. Uh, the other problem with Open Trip Planner is that it's a real black box, like it's really cool what it does, like this looks really cool, like you can get directions, but it's really hard to really customize at all. It's just like Java engine that, you know, if, if we had to change even one line of code personally, I would be really, really scared. Um, so we've not really, you know, and also this was mostly a volunteer kind of driven project. Uh, and so, you know, it's, it's also the challenges of kind of dealing with that, that it's kind of people who are just into kind of providing some better bus routing data. Uh, but, you know, we, I think I think we've managed to get something up, and then the question is also: Can we, you know, is it something interesting to work together with the people in other cities? We also have a bare bones Android app, uh, which you can find at somewhere. And we've got a website that that should be up pretty soon. But it's gone through like a major like design process and um, stuff like this. But there's an Android app that uh, if if you guys we're, we're working with people in Pune as well who maintain the Pune GTFS feed uh, and seeing if we can plug in uh, the Android app and perhaps the SMS app. Um, yeah, some some technical details for the fuzzy string matching. Uh, we're using. Um, uh, Postgres with uh, trigram indexes, which is actually really, really good and really easy to set up and makes a really complex problem feel really simple, uh, where you know you have to kind of match for inexact kind of spellings. Uh, it's just something you can install into Postgres, add your indexes and do queries and it will return you similarity matches with scores, etc. Um, that's really nice. Um, I'm actually close to end, so I'm going to end here and take questions. Um, 
questions. So yeah, that was kind of a quick run through through multiple things and uh, and we looked at uh, Mumbai Navigator. It's a project by yeah. Ivy Bombay. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, unfortunately, it's something that they didn't really maintain, mm -hmm. uh, and their data was really old as well. So, I mean, I think four or five years ago, met the student who kind of built that, and then uh, I think it was still up on their servers, but it would sometimes be up. So, it again, it was something that like a student just kind of built in two or three months, and it was incredibly useful. I think. It was the only thing that people could actually uh, use, but again, that it you know. So we have built a process now that when BSD sends us fresh data every three months, we've got a set of scripts to kind of import their fresh data and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, most of the work kind of landed up being that uh, because their data was, I mean, in theory Excel spreadsheets, but kind of really messy. Uh, but one good thing about the project was that they were able to. Uh, Give you alternate routes, so you know you do this like with mm -hmm. the the, uh, the metro or uh, you know the locals, mm -hmm. and then catch this bus. And so right. they had uh, the head math behind it figured out. Which made right. It. So Open Trip Planner does that. So Open Trip Planner, if you give it GTFS, does the heavy math for you. We didn't. So I'm not sure. I think his name was Alok Jadhav, the student who developed the navigator thing. Uh, I think he might have done a bunch of that heavy math himself, which was pretty cool. Uh, what we do want to do and hope to do by the end, you know, soonish, is plug in the B Bombay trains into GTFS as well. Now, since we have some experience outputting GTFS, trains actually do run on time. Trains are actually a lot easier to get. So it was kind of like, okay, we'll deal with that once we kind of get this sorted. So hopefully, then we'll have train data as well, which is when it gets kind of more more useful. I'd be interested in knowing what Google is doing for its Bombay uh, transit data. Actually, it's. It's fairly decent. I think our data might be slightly better. I'm not 100 percent sure, uh, but yeah, I'm not uh, because we got it straight from BSD, and that was just it took a lot of data processing to actually make it to make it useful. We built a couple of tools around that, which which are like built this tool to map out all the bus stops because we needed that and stuff like that. So there was some 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 tool building uh, behind the data collection as well because we needed to geolocate bus stops and stuff like that. Um, yeah, anything else? Uh, you showed that overlay thing, right? So uh, is there a specific way to scan it or something? Or uh, can you just scan it? Just just regular any scanner. Just get a JPEG off the map in whatever. What about resolution? And all that? So I mean, better resolution is good. I mean, then you can zoom in quite a lot and see detail. Like here, this is quite a high res map. Um, so I mean, it will require the internet to kind of uh, I mean, again, high res is good. Uh, low res is not is going to not be so great, but it depends on your use case a bit. So, uh, but you're free to kind of upload uh, whatever you want. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 you can also use it in quirky ways. I mean, hand drawn maps, or you know, some of, from the presentation in the morning. Um, uh, it's you know these slightly quirky maps is also can get interesting if you you know overlay it on actual geo data and see what happens or. I mean, this is fairly high res, so you'll see the details show up once it re-renders everything. Um, high res is good, but anything is fine. Take one last question. <clears throat> hey, like it or not, the movie world is driving a lot of tourism traffic. So if mm -hmm. you could switch to your Padma product. Uh, I can show the ZRX TV since there is more of these. Sure. sure. So the thing I'm trying to find the dots here is, is it Tagged, uh, let me rephrase it. So I do this movie clip mm -hmm. or a whole film, <clears throat> but a sudden sequence, mm -hmm. or let's take the song, mm -hmm. was shot in these multiple mm -hmm. locations. Mm -hmm. So are those locations is what you're tagging here? Yes, yes, it's it's at the clip level. So you mark an in point and out point. So you say from you know four minutes fifty seconds to four minutes fifty five seconds. This was the location, so it's tagged at the very specific clip level. Uh, so on zero XDB it passes subtitle files, so it's the length of the subtitle that's generally the length of the clip. And on Padma, it's kind of arbitrary, so people you can mark out like if you know if it, if it was a video of this conference talk, the, the entire thing would be whatever Terry Bangalore. But you can also mark out very specific segments. So what you're seeing here is clip level. So what you're seeing. Like here is like the five seconds where he said my training is over and I'm posted in Mumbai, I'm coming today. 
Okay. Um, so this is just that five seconds that was tagged with Mumbai, which is what I clicked on. Okay. So uh, how do you get this geodata? Is it MXD or? Ah, oh, uh, just parsing subtitle files. Oh, how would subtitles be with geotire? Oh, uh, so well, so there's a list of there's a white list of location names. Okay. So we were not to use Mumbai. Because if I were to take a song sequence, that's what people say, I want to go to Switzerland. Right. So, so the thing is, on 0xdb, it's all automatic. So there it just passes the subtitle files. Right? So the word Mumbai is mentioned. It knows Mumbai is a place because there's a white list of place names. And then it tags this to the actual place. Uh, on Padma, it's a bit more handcrafted where people will look at that clip even if, though it's not mentioned, they know it is shot here or it's referring this place and people will manually add the, the annotation of that place. Uh, Were there some standard with kind of geo tags as you keep shooting? Would you know there's some MXD or MXD? Or... Ah, ah, I see, like parsing it from the camera. Uh, you know, good question, I'm not sure. When, uh, when grabbing video now, there might be something. It's a standard. They have to have as well. Yeah, but the thing is, most of those cameras are really expensive. But that's not, yeah, on still cam, on video cameras, I like on the cameras that we've been dealing with, and especially, I mean, we used to deal with tapes. Now there's more kind of like HDB digital. There was never kind of geodata on the tapes that's themselves. Fine. But no, that's that, that's a good question. New cameras with GPS, this, this will be a good thing. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks, thanks.